Today, I want to talk about a topic that maybe isn't spoken about too often, and it is how passive really is a buy-to-let portfolio. People selling property courses and trainers will always tell you it's so passive, your hands off, there's income flowing in, you get the Bentley and it's all this stuff. And as much as they're doing it just to make a sale and just to kind of sell a dream, it isn't always a dream. And I kind of hate to say this, right? The way they present it is definitely oversold and like it's a dream. But, you know, speaking from owning 12 properties, one is a service accommodation. The rest are, you know, single let, buy to lets, family homes. My longest tenant's probably been there this three years now, maybe three and a half years. And it actually is the most passive form of income I have experienced. But when I say passive, you know, I'm talking that it's a couple of hours a month. Most of that, especially lately, has been gas day certificates. I text my gas guy and say, hey, got a certificate running out, when's your next slot? Okay, text a tenant, hey, you know, we've got a um, gas safe coming in, you know, I'll put you guys in touch. We've got to make sure we do it ASAP. It's obviously important. They sort it out. He goes, he goes, Ted, I've done it. Here's the invoice, here's the gas safe. And that's it. I had a boiler breakdown and I probably had to spend about an hour, hour and a half looking at the latest prices of boilers, putting a main eco compact because their customer service is generally pretty good, pretty responsive. And the boilers are backseas, basically just cheaper. So they're really good. And I spent the rest of the time finding a good gas safe person in which involved a Facebook post. It involved me reaching out to my network, speaking to people I know already, people I've worked with before getting about eight different prices. You know, and this was all done from my phone, sitting at home in the warmth, right? It was great. Other things have been boiler. Yes, that was a boiler being redone. I've had a boiler breakdown. So I had to get someone out there to fix it and to get the part, call customer support for the warranty and get them out there. I have had a tenant have some internal damage because we fixed the external issue and waiting for it to dry, just kind of going back and forth, trying to sort some dates out. I had to text one of the guys, he's late for, uh, late for rent, kind of just keep chasing him and he paid it, it was fine. Uh, some issue with work, apparently. That was pretty much it for January. All rent's been paid. One of the tenants is moving out, so I've been sort of doing the sums on making that into a service accommodation versus keeping it as a buy to let. But most months, this is what I do. In winter, it probably picks up because of the boilers, the heating, the hot water, and there's a lot more urgency with it. But before that, you know, the main interactions are uh, rent is late, what what's going on? Or it's, you know, is the house okay? Maintenance wise okay? Or it's a few maintenance requests. Now, why is it so passive? This is actually because I've refurbished all of the properties. So what that means is new boilers most of them, total rewire, new insulation, new plasterboards, new floors, new kitchen, new bathroom, everything. And in fact, the ones I didn't do that on because it didn't fit in the deal at the time, probably given me the most headache. But the ones I've done all the new work on, no real, real kind of issues. And if they are issues, they're quite minor. So because of that, because I follow the buy, refurbish, refinance, and I'll put a link up here to that, it means that my product is good and it's set for X many years, but there shouldn't really be any issues. Yes, you gotta spend more. Yes, you gotta sort of know what you're doing, Talk to me about that. Leave a comment below. I'll help you. But it really, really does decrease the maintenance. So if you do it right at the start, and this goes with tenants. Now, look, you can't guarantee that, you know, they're going to pay. You can't guarantee that they reference well, but they're actually good. You can't, right? They're humans. But if you do more DD, if you prepare yourself from the beginning, you prepare yourself for the rest of it, find them slowly, you reference them properly and thoroughly and in detail, you don't rush into it because oh, on bridge payments, you were gonna end up in a much better position, like with anything, to an extent, the more you research it, the more you understand it, the more you do, the better it's going to be. Just like when you're looking for a solicitor or a broker, you don't just rush into someone because, oh, my mate said he's good or he's my cousin and he's meant to be. No, you do your research and it's the same thing with tenants. So researching your tenants, Having a good lettings agent, who you can really ask, what were the tenants like? Did they love the house? You know, how do they come across? Mm, I don't like that on the reference form. Can we investigate? I want to see a full credit report. Can we get this, please? You know, having an agent on your side, not just, oh, well, that's Ted's house. He's one of 10 houses. Yeah, get the viewings in. Ted, you've got some tenants. Yeah, they're working. Working couple, they're great. Oh, they've got a little cat, but it's fine. Just blah, blah, blah. No, I want like a proper review of each person because they're my customer. You know, they're my client in a sense. They are paying the mortgage. They are paying for me to live. It ain't, ain't much, I'll tell you that from buy to lets for, for all the, you know, weirdos get involved. So if you set things right from the start with the refurb and with the tenants, it makes the rest of the process so much easier. And then lastly, having a really good maintenance team. So pick up Craig from Mainty, who I can text and we can get someone there same day, next day, very, very quickly. And then multi-skilled people who can fix various issues that need to be fixed, you know, and having other gas safe people or other sparkies who, can go and do what's needed. And it's not just one, you know, you've got to have backups. 
in case someone's too busy or in case that skill isn't free at the right time. And you actually want tradespeople who are respectable and nice, and look, most are. I've never had an issue with a tenant saying, oh, they were a bit weird or like, oh, I didn't like, like I've never had that, which is actually good, you know? You'd expect in any line of business or work to be the odd, you know, sort of issue, but no, nothing, which I think is, is awesome and is good to hear and good to see. But those are three ways that you can make your income more passive, but look, it can be passive couple of hours a month. I don't have to be in this country. I don't have to be at my desk. You know, there's different software. There's Google Drive, which holds all the documents. There's so much you can do for free, you know, almost. If you set it up right from the beginning, that will mean it's as passive as I'm telling you. Now look, I have single let by to let. My one service accommodation, fully managed, fully outsourced. So that's even more passive. If I had HMOs, if I had, I don't know, three whole blocks of flight, it might be different. So I'm speaking from my experience. And this is why I like single lets. I've got loads of videos on, I've written a book on it, links below, because I like them for what they give you post completion, right? And how it works with them and their passivity. So don't fall for the dreams, don't fall for the quick promises and the, you know, you never have to do anything. You get an agent. I manage all my properties 200 miles away because I can and it works. I don't need to be here. People say, oh, I want to buy a house close to me. I'll just buy it, you know, spend 400 grand, get like a 2% yield, but it's close to me, you know, so all for management. This is one of the stupidest things I hear. Like, it makes no sense at all. I always say to these people, are you a plumber? Uh, no. Are you a builder? Uh, no. Can you rod drains? Uh, no. Can you fix that? Uh, no. So tell me something. You being close to the house means what exactly? There's nothing that you can physically do. But even when, if rent isn't paid, you can't knock on the door and say, give me the rent. What has your physicality, your location to the house got to do with anything? I'd rather you invested in your opinion, but do what you want, somewhere else and got a 20% yield, got a 30% yield of return on your money left in. So just think about how you're doing stuff and why you're doing stuff and if you really need to be there and how passive it can be if things are done correctly from the start. So you know what to do, but I'm gonna have to tell you again, just in case you forgot or just in case you're new. And right now, there's a big red button down there. Hit subscribe, hit the like, give me a thumbs up. Why not? Give me a thumbs up and leave a comment and uh, go on Amazon, type in Tej Talks and see what you find.